welcome to another edition of Pitch Brand Talk. I'm very happy to have with me today Ishan Bose. He's the Chief Marketing Officer at Credit P. Credit P is a platform that facilitates loan transactions between borrowers and personal loan providers such as banks and NBFCs. Uh, Ishan, welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Thank you, Simran. Glad to be here. Hope I'm able to add some valuable insights uh, in this conversation and looking forward to it. Uh, Ishan, I just want to start off with, you know, you're a platform that facilitates loan transaction between borrowers and personal loan providers, like I mentioned earlier, uh, like NBFCs and banks. So how exactly are you positioned your platform in the market as well as for the consumers? Sure. So uh, first thing, we ourselves are an NBFC or rather we have an NBFC license ourselves, which is by the name of Crazy B Services Private Limited. It's an NBFC NDSI, non-deposit taking systemic uh, NBFC. Uh, and uh, we primarily lend digitally um, on the Credit B app itself. So uh, on the Credit B app, or platform we uh, apart from kb and bfc we also enable certain other lenders and banks and nbfcs to lend on the credit b app uh, it's mostly a co-lending model so either credit b lends completely by itself or there is a co-lending between credit b and uh, another lender on the credit b app so that's how the you know the back end of the lending mechanism is uh, defined um, how we are positioned, so uh, we primarily want to serve Middle India when it comes to their uh, financial needs. Of course, the largest financial need that we are uh, addressing at the moment is uh, online lending uh, or rather credit uh, for consumers. Primarily because uh, most of the Middle India, while um, you know we see there are you know huge banks and NBFCs that operate in India and uh, you know it's a very structured way in which the BFSI operates in India and is regulated but um, there is a huge demographic that still doesn't have a very direct or seamless access to these financial services um, and uh, the best way to solve it was online not just with respect to sourcing consumers but also um, fulfilling their financial needs and lending of course or uh, Credit, uh, of course, was the biggest need that we identified and started with. And, uh, um, you know, we have been fortunate that in the last uh, seven years, almost, we have been able to serve more than one crore individual unique uh, customers with their credit needs. And uh, when you look at this number, it may come across as one crore individuals. But how we look at it is one crore households, right? Because... Uh, a lot of these loans are not individualistic requirements, but these are uh, requirements that different households have uh, for different cash crunches, for different uh, emergency needs, uh, sometimes to even upgrade, upgrade their lifestyles, upgrade their uh, businesses, right? Uh, sometimes it's about initiating new um, you know, new endeavors, um, new businesses, uh, new experiences. So there are multiple needs which uh, essentially, uh, you know, people have for themselves and their families and we help them move forward. We make sure that uh, these financial constraints don't come in the way of any individual moving forward just because they may not have a direct uh, geographic access to a bank or an NBFC. So um, that ways we are uh, we are uh, uh, primarily serving Middle India and uh, eighty percent of our consumers, by the way, are from tier two, tier three cities and towns. So only fifteen to twenty percent of our audience uh, comes from metros and tier ones. Of course, within the metros and tier ones, um, you know, we we serve quite a lot of consumers, but uh, most of our overall audience is in tier two tier three cities and towns where uh, maybe the offline uh, presence of banks and nbfcs is not as much what has definitely helped us in the last five to ten years is um, accessibility of internet uh, in larger uh, areas of india whether it's with respect to having smartphones or inexpensive internet uh, so that has definitely helped us uh, 
uh, spread ourselves and reach out to more and more people to serve them. And uh, our overall idea for the next five ten years is to serve these people and a lot more uh, financially in ways more than one. While of course, uh, credit is something that we will continue to go deep on and wide on by looking at uh, other areas of lending. Uh, we also look forward to um, identify and serve these customers uh, with other use cases beyond uh, loans as well. We already have insurance, credit score report. Um, um, you know, uh, these are a few other um, services that we provide to our consumers and we will continue to grow while we also uh, make sure that within the credit uh, ecosystem, we go beyond unsecured and uh, look at secured use cases as well. Like, for instance, loan against property is one um, one particular uh, product that we have recently launched. Then we are also in two-wheeler loans at the moment. So there are quite a few uh, credit use cases that we will continue to explore deep on and at the same time look at uh, use cases that are beyond uh, credit as well. I just want to check with you, uh, what is, uh, you know, you mentioned in Middle India. So what is, uh, you know, the uh, can you explain to me the target uh, group that you have? Is it only men? Because a lot of NBFCs also look for women and to bring them into the financial uh, inclusion. And to, I mean, where a lot of them also focus on financial in, uh, inclusion of women. The other part, uh, just with this, another question which I want to ask, what's generally the ticket size that you see of loans? Because you mentioned tier two and tier three form about 80 to 85 percent of your uh, of the output. So how much is this average loan size? OK, so let me start with your second question. Uh, so our average ticket size uh, is somewhere around 20,000 rupees. Um, However, it ranges uh, between 5,000 rupees to 5 lakh rupees when it comes to personal loans. We lend up to uh, 10 lakh rupees when it comes to business loans and um, in almost, uh, I would say, up to 70 lakh rupees when it comes to loans against property. So our, uh, uh, we have uh, a huge spectrum of uh, the ticket size when it comes to lending. Uh, however, for, specifically for personal loans, the um, the average ticket size is somewhere at around 20,000 rupees at the moment, and it's gradually and constantly increasing over time. Um, we don't serve only men for sure. Of course, uh, by the nature of, uh, you know, where the demand and supply meets, we see that mostly uh, the individuals that borrow on our platform are uh, of the male gender. But uh, we don't have any constraints from our side, uh, which are gender specific or age specific or geography specific. And um, that's the beauty of the way we uh, operate, right? That we are, in a sense, a very inclusive platform that uh, allows everyone to apply for a loan irrespective of, uh, you know, what's your uh, geographical presence or what's your gender or if it's within the legal age of lending, then within that uh, range, what's your age? Uh, of course, we have our gatekeeping parameters uh, with respect to who to lend, which is determined by our uh, credit algorithm. But uh, that does not, uh, you know, essentially discriminate people from who they are and where they come from. It's purely based on uh, our evaluation of what your uh, repal repayment uh, intent and uh, capability is. And that's the only thing that we evaluate. Everything else uh, doesn't matter to us. Could you look at the quality of your customer and what's the mode of communication or the media mix that you use? So uh, most of our origination, um, or let me take a step back uh, since you asked about acquisitions. So most of our acquisition happens digitally. Um, we have uh, our own uh, performance marketing activities primarily, which is where we get a lot of our uh, customers from. Apart from that, we have a lot of uh, uh, deep integrations with 
uh, partners across the spectrum where customers can come and show a loan intent on their platform itself a lot of our journey is also uh, integrated on uh, on the respective partner platforms and uh, in certain cases um, the journeys are so advanced that the customer can even complete the credit b loan journey on our partner platform and uh, in certain other cases partial journey is completed on our partner platform and the remainder of the journey is um, completed on credit b where the person uh, the customer has to come and uh, download the app and uh, take a loan on credit b so that's another uh, source of uh, acquisition for us which is slightly high on intent and curation with respect to loans at the outset um so these are uh, from a paid marketing standpoint or a paid acquisition standpoint these are the two largest uh, categories under which we can uh, you know bucket our acquisition on uh, on the paid side apart from that uh, because we have been in the ecosystem for almost six and a half years now so a um, lot of customers happen to know about us because of word of mouth because of referral because of um, you know because after a point you reach a critical mass where a um, lot of these things are um, referred or understood from people around you so a lot of our acquisition in fact more than 50% of our acquisition of loans is of organic nature where uh, either because of our direct brand uh, awareness with respect to the consumer or because of um, you know some referral or some word of mouth uh, that would have happened at some point in time in the tg the customer comes directly and takes a loan from us so that's the primary source of acquisition for us the media mix that you tell typically use is it only digital or are you use, using using uh, vtl and etl also so uh, uh, it's primarily digital i would say uh, we haven't uh, while we do a uh, certain brand activations and activities from time to time but our reliance on acquiring customers through those brand activations whether it's atl or btl is fairly limited um majority of our acquisition is uh has been sales driven so far uh having said that we have been exploring uh, brand activations and using it as a sustainable source of acquisition for us uh, in the recent past and uh, we are evaluating and growing our um, initiatives and endeavors in that direction as we speak now you know coming to influencers and also because you you um, are mostly present in tie to in tie three cities when like micro influencers also play a big role how have they been in, uh, integral to your marketing efforts and how has these uh, collaborations worked out for you see honestly we haven't uh, gone very deep on influencer marketing um ourselves uh primarily because uh, what we realized is that uh the kind of offering that we have um uh, the consistency in communication and uh, reaching out to the consumer plays a lot bigger role than um you know a short term word of mouth of course um influencer marketing has its own benefits and can be used in multiple ways but uh, specifically in our case uh, you know we we have relied more on the digital uh direct to consumer acquisition either uh through our digital marketing performance marketing efforts or through our uh aggregator partners having said that uh, uh speaking um generically uh, or you know in 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 essence of you know how influencer marketing um can and has helped organizations so um it's it's essential to choose a the right influencer because more than a quantity it's a quality game i believe right uh, uh, the success of influencer marketing depends a lot on what kind of uh, an audience and uh, influencer commands and more than that what is the trust that an influencer commands in their audience there are a lot of influencers with all due respect who might have a lot of digital followers but if you dwell uh, a little deeper on their actual uh, digital presence you realize that lot of it is not very genuine or not very organic right so it's very important to understand a what is the uh, credibility of the influencer with respect to the audience that they are delivering to that is one b do they have a subject matter expertise are they um 
communicating regularly are they actually influencing people with respect to a certain because nobody uh, can be a generic influencer unless you are a celebrity or a social uh, ninja right so you know which is essentially where a lot of brand ambassadors or brand endorsements come in but specifically in case of uh an influencer uh if you may call anyone uh by that uh, tag essentially it's important uh with respect to a certain subject matter if they are able to communicate or if they have the command of a particular subject matter then communicating about that makes it a lot more credible than um you know any individual who just has a lot of followers coming and speaking about it of course um it definitely helps in the brand awareness when when somebody comes and speaks to a large audience but with respect to the purchase decisioning and behavior uh, i think it definitely plays a bigger role if there is an added uh, layer of subject matter expertise and um the third thing i believe is uh, you know i think there are uh, services there are products there are uh, offerings where influencer marketing would play a lot bigger role than otherwise i think uh, high involvement or medium involvement purchases purchases that are a lot more personal in nature or personalized in nature let's say you know with respect to fashion retail or with respect to um um you know let's say real estate for that matter real estate may not be a great example in um, with respect to influencer marketing but uh, what i mean to say is that uh, experiences where um you know which require a larger involvement from the uh, from the buyer and experiences where the level of personalization and customization is a lot more something that an individual would associate themselves a lot more with i believe in general has a larger um um has a larger win from influencer marketing versus um you know uh, offerings that are more generic that are more utility driven of course uh, it can help you get the right kind of brand awareness and you know the first uh, layer of uh, brand reach but beyond that when it comes to purchase decisioning i believe uh, influencer marketing would have a, rel- a relatively limited role to play in large scale utility businesses versus um, businesses where you know the level of personalization and customization is an, is a lot more so it's not a binary yes or no but definitely it's a spectrum where in certain kind of offerings to certain kind of tg certain kind of influencers can play a bigger role versus the others but you know you mentioned that you frequently or rather it's not you don't use that many influencers is this also because semi has come down hard on fin- financial of fintech influencers and recently you know they've also uh, come out with new guidelines is this also a matter see honestly uh, our decision was not typically related to the sebi guidelines on influencers um, mm-hmm. uh, we like i said you know we are very open minded about um, different a uh, ways in which we can onboard the consumers um so um regulation is very important in the financial ecosystem and uh, we respect the fact that you know now the regulators are also uh, taking it a lot more uh, seriously and they are actually uh, putting strict guidelines and measures about how you must uh, educate the consumer whether it's directly through your own platforms or through um you know influencers who are there in the market and essentially anybody who is in this value chain of uh, uh, financial services right from uh, communication to distribution to servicing has to come under the gamut of uh, regulation because any loose ends can actually have a huge impact not just uh, for the consumers but also for the larger uh, financial ecosystem at play so um i believe that it's a it's a great step uh, that sebi has taken um and i believe there's a lot more to come um what we as an organization definitely uh do very directly and very actively is play our own role in financial education uh when it comes to uh, specifically lending because that's the business uh, uh, we are directly in but uh, sometimes even things that are of very generic nature so in fact we 
डिड कैंपेन लास्ट टू लास्ट ईयर विच इज जागरूक रहे सावधान रहे सो एसेंशली इट वॉज इट वॉज अ कैंपेन राधा इट वॉज जागरूक रहे साइबर स्मार्ट रहे सो इट इट वॉज अ कैंपेन विच इन इट वॉज अ थ्री सीरीज कैंपेन वेर वी showcased different situations uh, different uh, scenarios where cyber fraud can happen and uh, cyber fraud is not just limited to uh, digital lending but it could happen across any use case of financial services whether it's investments whether it's deposits or you know sometimes even money transfer so uh, uh, the idea is that as a pioneer as a uh, as a leader in the uh, fintech lending ecosystem we believe that it's our responsibility as well to educate the consumers about the best practices of um, you know financial um, literacy financial education financial involvement awareness so um, the idea is not just to um, um you know just to reach out to the consumers with transactional uh reasons but also to make sure that you make a difference in their lives by letting them know what is right and what not so um yes so with respect to influencer marketing of course i think what sebi has done is appreciable and commendable and we ourselves as an organization ensure that you know we reach out to different consumers ourselves directly as well as through our open ended campaigns and educate them about cyber security and how they can financially handle themselves better how are you looking at uh, ai ai ar and uh, how are you incorporating this in your marketing initiatives right so um artificial intelligence i think has has been abused as a term quite a bit i often uh, speak about it in uh, different forums you know when anybody asks me this question as to you know what is the role of ai i think ai is very wide and uh, there are many use cases of uh, ai that have already been uh, prevalent in the marketing ecosystem for i think close to a decade i would say in different levels of maturity so if you talk about user acquisition so uh, the two largest uh, universal sources of uh, performance marketing acquisition which is google and meta right so they both have tapped in ai ml as a part of their uh, acquisition effort so google has this uh, universal app campaigns uac product which uh, essentially helps uh, um, advertisers to acquire users uh, by uh letting the system learn uh on what goals you want to uh optimize your campaigns for and then um you know google will take uh you know around a weeks time to evaluate the data and finding out that you know where that what kind of user group is uh the right uh target segment for your campaign goals for what you're trying to do and then it will optimize the campaigns itself unlike how it used to happen earlier where the entire campaign definition had to be um, humanly given by you know the campaign manager and a lot of times you would find out by hit and trial versus now google itself uh, optimizing the campaigns on your behalf so it's an excellent product a lot of uh, marketers speak very highly about it of course everything is evolving by the day but i think uh, even in the current form i think it's a fairly useful product uh, facebook has uh, aaa automated app ads so that is very similar to uac in google so that's on the acquisition side um a lot of automation tools have been in the market for almost a decade now where you can identify uh, different uh, campaign strategies what works for you and then you can automate it and sometimes the campaigns also you can even allow the campaigns to learn by themselves by putting some uh, triggers or some um, specific thresholds uh, basis which the campaigns can perform in a certain way so that's again something that uh, has been in the in the industry for quite long um very recently uh, or relatively le- recently let's say uh, generative ai has has become a buzzword um uh, a lot of marketers uh, in fact a lot of product uh, enthusiasts they are using um generative ai to optimize their efforts um uh, to create outcomes which earlier would take a lot of time so 
what it has essentially done is that it has saved a lot of time and efforts that were earlier going in relatively trivial things to now focus on things that are more innovation driven more outcome driven so that is one of the uh, recent um, relatively recent uh, uh, expansions of ai in the marketing uh, industry um very recently you, you talked about uh, augmented reality so i think this is something which is yet to uh, find a widespread uh, recognition and adoption uh, however there are uh, startups that have specifically now started to focus completely on ar use cases for organizations there are organizations that have started to understand the impact of augmented reality and how it can um, transform the marketing efforts so what what's if, if you look at the um, graduation of uh, how ai has been evolving so the initial use cases were a lot more functional in nature but over time what we see is that the uh, use cases are becoming more and more experiential where a um, lot of uh, real life experiences um, which which can be which earlier could not be experienced within the gamut of uh, a product or a digital journey are now getting adopted and uh, the overall idea is that how you can transform the entire user uh, experience completely from uh, you know something that is very transactional and very surface level to something that is a lot more holistic even though you are online right uh, i also believe that um, the role that augmented reality has to play uh, with respect to marketing um is uh, is also very dependent on the industry that uh, you know that uh, is uh, trying to adopt it right so like i mentioned earlier right that um, domains where um, which are mostly driven by real life experiences right like let's say fashion retail apparel lifestyle travel and hospitality let's say so industries like these which are more experiential more personalized or where the scope of personalization and experience is a lot more i think uh, ar can directly be blended into the business model and they can actually play a direct role in impacting the bottom line of these organizations um for organizations that are mostly utility driven um i think uh, the role that ar would play going forward would be largely in let's say communication about how you uh let's say create ads or uh user education when it comes to educating user about certain use cases related to you or making them experience something with respect to how the the utility could transform your life right could uh, it could be in enhancing the journey uh, making it a lot more interactive it could be enhancing the service channels making the servicing a lot more interactive so uh, while for uh, experience driven um organizations i think the the role that ar would play would be a lot direct when it comes to and a lot more when it comes to business uh for utility driven organizations i think it's going to be relatively more with respect to the um, metrics that surround business which indirectly would impact the business but uh i think i think the there's going to be a difference in how the or rather the role that ar has to play with respect to the uh, industry that you operate in thank you so much ishan talking to you it was lovely and very insightful thank you so much simran i hope uh, i could add some valuable insights thank you